20 years old. That's when I officially opened up Nanoflow because like I, the LLC, the LLC and all that stuff. Yep. Okay. because I got an insurance check under to Nanoflow for the Tesla because he got hit. And then I had to do some buffing, you know, for him after the repair work was done and redo some parts. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, OK, well, I got to make a bank account because they won't accept the check uh, under Nanoflow because Nanoflow doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> so that's when I really started. And then, you know, I would detail stuff here and there. And I thought, OK, well, why don't I tie the aviation passion and experience and the detailing for cars together. When I tried to tie aviation and cars together, I ended up doing boats. <laughs> okay, so how did, how did that happen? Uh, a boat was presented uh, to me, like one of the car clients was sent over to another boat client. And then uh, I'm like, sure, you know, I figured paint is paint, you know, cleaning is cleaning. You know, there's just a different type of vessel, a different type of vehicle. That, that's really it. And I did it. And and uh, it really took off from there. I did a lot of boats. So it's been a while. So, but I did try to start a business like detailing airplanes. And I remember one big thing I looked into was the insurance. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you talk to me about yeah. how did you manage getting an insurance? Because oh. I remember it's a lot of money. And, and this mm. was like uh, probably 2016, mm. 2017, around there when I tried to do it. How did you manage that? Yeah, it's, that was a hurdle as well. So it came to a point where I had to get a badge for an airport. And in order to get the badge or to work on an FBO, I had they presented to me $5 million of commercial general liability and then hangar keeper insurance uh, to go with it and then the aviation liability. So there were like three parts to this whole policy. And, you know, me being like 21, you know, 22, trying to, get a $5 million aviation policy, you know, um, was not easy. And I did uh, get some quotes for it, but I also took some courses uh, for aviation detailing. So I will give a shout out to one course that was very well put together. It's Brett Berry's Shiny Jets course. Okay. And uh, any course you take that pays for itself is a well-made course. That means you've benefited more from it because you've made even more money because you've taken the course or you've done it. Absolutely. And I've done it and uh, it helped me walk through a lot. Some of the stuff I already knew, of course, because I was already detailing, but it really enhanced other things to maybe do faster uh, or do better. And also to figure out just legitimizing my business even more. And yeah, insurance. So yeah, I'll ask you for the link uh, they, when we're done. Yeah, because so, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the yeah, description. It was the quote for the five million was like, I want to say it was either thirteen or eighteen thousand dollars. So it was five figures, and it's a lump sum. So they demand it all up front, unless you want to do financing. But the financing was ridiculous. It was like outrageous. It wasn't you know worth doing it month to month. Okay, and I I mean I had a kind of a choice either do I continue flight training, paying for that, uh, having money for that, or do I just kind of dump really everything that I have at the time to put this aviation uh, detailing insurance uh, so I can write the check for it? And I made the decision to write the check because I was able to take on a new client. I was able to take on a Challenger jet that I could wash. I could not wash this jet unless I had that insurance. I had it, and it was through networking that I got this client. And... Um, it's really not that hard to be better than most people at, in whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And like the last people that were detailing that plane, I think they left tape on the NACA ducks. So they were, you know, the operators of that airplane were looking to find new detailers. And I just presented myself at the right time. Yeah, but let me ask you this. You were 21, correct? Uh, about 21, 22. 22. For this, yeah. Um. What what did you say to these clients in order for them to like take you on? Um, I just say I, I do detailing. <laughs> I um, I do aircraft detailing. I do um, all the services go with the airplane. I'm very thorough. My process is a little bit different. I'm not the brown bear for washing airplanes. Um, my process is different in the sense that I'm thinking about how to uh, preserve the paint more and how to preserve the aircraft more. I'm not using bristle brushes, which is also what I learned from the course as well, is I'm not using anything abrasive. I'm using a technique that is the least amount of abrasion, doesn't make the uh, hanger all wet from the wet wash, because wet washing also has a down um, a con of leaving water spots behind. You can't dry the whole airplane in one go. 
uh, and then you make a mess. So if you're doing it inside and if you're outside, you're going to risk water spotting. And then you're also going to risk putting water in places where maybe it shouldn't go. Sure. And then a dry wash is usually the, what's usually, oh, you want to wet wash or dry wash? The dry wash is the alternative. Well, dry wash isn't as lubricating enough. Um, it's You're going to go through a lot more towels. You're going to um, not pick up the dirt as nicely as you should be. And you're going to be uh, braiding the surface as you go. So it's very dry. So there's, uh, there's science to this too. And then the best, in my opinion, is doing a rinseless. So it's the best of both worlds. Best of dry wash because you're using um, minimal water, but it's the best of a wet wash because you're still pretty much splashing or you're, you're spraying the whole surface with the rinseless solution. You're spraying it as if it's a, a garden hose, but just not in the obscene amounts of water. You're Got just it. spraying it with a pump sprayer. And... And I sold myself to that. You know, I said, well, this is the best way to wash. I can do it inside a hanger. You don't have to pull it out. And I'm preserving your paint for a longer life. Uh, and on top of that, I also started getting into ceramic coatings, which are essentially a permanent wax solution. So once it's installed, it doesn't have to be reapplied for a while, for many years. It's kind of like adding another layer of clear to your paint. And it's incredibly hydrophobic, so all the water just bounces off. And that was kind of my niche for the boats, the planes, and the cars. And I still as, I uh, still do that. And so I continue working on this Challenger. I would wash it every month. And in fact, if you're looking into getting aviation detailing, it's a great rewarding career and getting, you know, paying for your flight training too. Because instead of, so what is it? Do you know what a, a pilot rate for a Challenger, mid, you know, midsize jet would be for I, pilot, sure. co-pilot? Oh, oh, for uh, like flying? Yeah, for crew, like contractor, contract rates. Uh, probably jet. like 25, 2,500. Okay. Yeah. For, for day rate? Day rate, 2,500. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a little higher now, I guess. So, or, okay. Or, so, but in order to get there, you need to have thousands of hours. Yeah. Or, when I was charging this Challenger to wash it in five hours, it's, that's what it takes, it takes five man hours to wash it. I was charging them $1,300 to wash their airplane. To do so, so it was kind of like I can get paid thirteen hundred day rate for flying a jet, you know, maybe smaller jets, sure, or I can get paid thirteen hundred in five hours, come home the same night, wash it, and be done, and then pay for my additional flight hours that way. That is incredible, man! How did you come up with that with that rate? It was that from the course. It was from the course. It was from he, the, okay. Yeah, he gives you now he has an app, so you buy uh, you, it's a membership app. You pay for and you plug in like the wingspan or you plug in probably now the model of the airplane and it punches, spits you out the prices for all the services, bright work. And it's catered specifically to that airplane because some airplanes have more bright work than others. Some airplanes have boots. Some airplanes right. have bigger wings. So price of a wash, wax or coating, boots, bright work, interiors, all that stuff. And so I'd wash this Challenger every month. And then I, I decided to pitch him the most entry level spray on coating which is like six months durability. It's just super diluted coating. And they would only wash it after that. They would only wash it every four months. That's how much cleaner it stayed longer. So that's a testimony to coatings that the airplane stays cleaner longer, less maintenance, hmm. and they save money that way. I shot myself in the foot because now <laughs> right. I'm making <laughs> money. But, but yeah.